didn't plan for that one. 2.50. That was good. That was good. That was that was right on. 2.50. The reason I had to change it is when I pulled it off the bungee, it registered it registered what what is essentially well it didn't do it now because I've actually cut it. It'll actually register another hit because of the doing. But yeah. 2.50. Right on the money. Uh, if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, this is the church drill, which is normally five seconds, 10 yards, and I'm actually slightly over it. I'm slightly at like seven and a half-ish yards here. And uh, I'm just trying to stay in, in, in as much shadow as I can because I don't have sunglasses on right now. Um, I'm having eye surgery in a few weeks, so I can't wear my contacts anymore. I'm having to wear my prescription glasses, which I hate. Hate wearing glasses, which is why I'm having eye surgery done to correct my vision and um, and anyway so I'm stuck wearing my glasses and I just I don't you notice how they don't fit how they don't sit level I've got damage I've got a divot there and I got some weird thing going back here I was dropped as a baby I actually I know I was dropped as a baby story there but I'll leave it alone and I also took a really hard hit when I was a kid I fell off of a bunk bed that I believe was about that high onto a marble granite, I don't know what it was, it was my abuelito's house, my grandfather's house in Puerto Rico, and the bunk bed was tall. And I, as I went down, I hit my grandma's Singer sewing machine with the treadle, with the iron treadle, and then I, ah, I hit the floor, and it was so, it was such a long drive from where we were in um, uh, Carolina, Puerto Rico, down to San Juan. San Juan was like that. You would see it. We were so far up in the mountains that you would see San Juan down below. And so it was like, yeah, he's okay. So, you know, I, I'm sure I have something that happened there as a child. So my glasses don't sit properly on my head. And, uh, and this has been a problem my whole life, and I hate it. So that's why I'm out here doing this, because I'm trying to get my eyes accustomed for the next two weeks to see things through these wretched glasses that I hate. And there is no better drill to teach you this skill than the church drill, because it's 10 yards, 5 seconds. I'm doing it at 2.5 seconds. But it's 10 yards, 5 seconds, 1 shot. I mean, come on. I'm expending 1 shot per rep. And when I finish the rep, it is a full follow through. It's shoot, track it. For some reason, this target's being a booger, not wanting to fall over. Um, uh, it's track the target and then check 360 and then put the gun up. And um, what a great drill to do. So let's keep working. I'm going to do a few more reps. And when I do a reload, I'll call it quits. And if the camera dies before then, you'll know that it died because the battery is close to death and it's so hot out here that it may actually thermally shut itself down to protect itself before then. So if it does, God bless you all. Thank you for watching. Get those guns out and practice. Have a good one. And I'm going to keep working as long as that camera runs. Here we go. Oh man, I hope the camera picks this up. Look at what I have going here. My left foot is that way. My right foot is this way. I was actually slightly off balance when I rotated because I'm trying to get accustomed to the image that I see through this and objects through my glasses look really weird to me. I'm accustomed to reaching out for an object and finding it in a certain space and uh, uh, in a certain position and space in front of me. But with glasses, everything is different because I'm looking through a, a sheet of correction rather than an orbital type of a thing because contacts stick to the eye so it's more of a full wraparound image of correction Two point oh six. that didn't suck oh you know what's amazing about that that shot almost looks like it went through him, but I actually saw the dirt kick up in the distance, so I know that was a miss. And I had time to spare, 2.11. You know what's interesting, guys? <clears throat> 
tachypsychia kicks in, 2.20, okay? I still had time left. Remember, I'm running off of a 2.50, two and a half second, 2.50. Tachypsychia kicks in, and as soon as that buzzer sounds, I rotate and I feel like I'm already behind. I feel like I'm already out of time. And I throw my gun out there in front of me and I have, because remember guys, every motion that you're doing is, it's uh, the rotation is fast, 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 stop, slow, front sight, pull the trigger. So everything you're doing is fast, 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 and all of a sudden it has to come to screeching halt to get the shot. And tachypsychia kicks in at bullet time, some people call it. The tachypsychia kicks in and everything already feels like slow motion. You already feel like you're just dragging tail trying to make your time. And you realize, I actually have enough time to stop, stabilize, front sight, pull the trigger, recoil, find my next front sight, or find my next sight picture on my front sight if the guy is still there. And if that's the case, well, I, if I have to shoot him, if you have to shoot him once, you have to shoot him again. So you shoot him again, and then he finally disappears. And then you track him, where did he go? There he is, oh, he's not getting up again. And then move. Great drill. Wow, that camera's still rolling. I'm impressed, normally it thermally locks up by now. All right, I'm actually amazed that it made it to the end of this video. So with that, um, once again, uh, dynamite drill, 2.11 on that one. If you, have, if you have the ability to do the charge drill and you get it at five seconds, man, start shaving time off. Take it to four, or take it to three, uh, take it to four and a half. Take it to three and a half, start shaving it down. I've got it down to two and a half. And from these times, I now know that I can push it to about two seconds. Think about that. Rotation, uh, rotation, draw. Um, so it's, that's, that falls under move, stop, stabilize, shoot, move, holster, move. Two and a half seconds. It's a good drill. One bullet per rep. Guys, we keep hearing... There are companies right now, actually this is a great way to close this video, and I better hurry. There are companies that are pushing product right now, and they're preying on the fact that there is a massive ammo shortage. And they know that you're desperate, I am too, for ammunition, for training. I just gave you a great drill with live fire that you can do. Live fire. And I bet you could probably get away with this in an indoor range, as long as you're not drawing until you're fully rotated. Or, or if you can't draw from an indoor range. All right, I'm almost done. If you can't draw in an indoor range, fine, then put the gun on the table. Guys, work with what you got. Work with what you got. Uh, look, I'll tell you this. Uh, the range I used to shoot at when I lived in Cocoa Beach um, in uh, the uh, Melbourne area of, of, of Florida, which is near Cocoa, I got to know the owner of the place. I believe his name was Kim. And once he got to know me and he realized that I was a responsible firearm owner, he kind of let me fudge the rules and let me draw because he knew that I was actually being conscientious about what it was that I was doing. So, also I saved his bacon because when he was redoing his uh, his uh, battering ram, the, 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 the bullet trap at the end, um, I told him one day when I was in there shooting that I kept going like this side to side and I was seeing daylight. And he went down and inspected it and someone had been in there shooting some some uh, penetrating ammo, and it actually zipped rounds through his bullet trap, and they had actually gone through, and they'd hit the concrete wall behind, and it had actually punched out chunks of the concrete wall. So it was almost on the on the point of actually making it through out into the street on the other side. So that's when he went to to rubber chop. Anyways, great memories. That was man, that was 2001. Guys, work. This drill is one bullet, one bullet per rep. A box of 50, think about it, 50 reps of doing this. Guys, that's days worth of training. If you do 10 reps of this and call it a day for two or three days and go back to it again, you're actually going to go through this stuff and you're going to record this stuff in your head and you're going to 
break it apart in your dreams and catalog what you're learning because of the kinetics that go with this and working on steel. Guys, you don't have to just do dry fire. You can do low round reps that yield a lot of performance. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns on practice. Have a good one.